Hello guys, welcome back to part 13 of our H086 programming tutorial. In this part of the video, we are going to learn about stack in H086. We will be learning about instructions like push and pop that allows the programmer uh, to access the stack of H086 from, a, from an assembly level program or assembly language program. So in this part of the video, I'll be first briefly explaining you the stack in H086 or uh, a few points that you need to know uh, when you want to use the stack in H086. And once those points are explained, then uh, at the end of the video, I'll be writing a program, a 086 AL assembly language program uh, to reverse the content of a string using stack. You can do, you can reverse the content of a string in many ways. So uh, here we'll be using a stack to actually reverse the content of a string. Okay, guys, then let's begin. Let me first start with uh, what is a stack? What is a stack? So if you have already done C programming and data structure, then certainly you people have encountered with the concept of a stack. A stack is nothing but you can think of a stack is a container which is closed from all the three sides and open only from one side. It means whenever you want to store data into the stack or if you want to store data into the stack or if you want to retrieve data from the stack, both these two operations you have to perform only through that open end. Now with that restriction, uh, what I mean by this closed and uh, closed sites, it means that you cannot randomly access any particular slot from the stack. See here, the slot is conceptually broken down into, into, into some slots. So you cannot randomly go to any particular slot and read or write that slot. So that is not possible in stack data structure. So if you want to do that, first thing is that that particular slot should become the topmost slot. Then only you'll be able to you know, either retrieve the data or you'll be able to stop uh, store data there, sort of that. Okay. Now, these storing data, first thing is the storing data into the stack is called as push operation, and retrieving data from the stack is technically called as the pop operation. Those two terms I'll be using. Now, see, this, this, this stack, as I said, now with this constraint, like only one open end, and through that only you will push the data or, or you will pop the data, that constraint makes this container a last in first out container or a first in last out container. Isn't it? You see here, see, this is your container and suppose, sorry, this is your, this is your container and suppose, Suppose you want to store 1, 2, 9, and 6 into the stack. So what you'll be doing is you'll be pushing, see from left to right, say I'm reading the number. I'll be pushing 1 first, and then 2, and then 9, and then 6. These elements I want to push into the stack. So that way, this 1 will occupy this slot, 2 will occupy this slot, 9 will occupy this slot, and 6 will be here. Now if I want to retrieve this data back, then what will happen is this 6 will be retrieved first, then 9, then 2, then 1. So I'll be getting the data in this way, 6, 9, 2, and 1. So that way, whatever the element that I have inserted first, I retrieve that element at the end, right? So that way it is first in, last out uh, structure or data structure. Or you can think of like whatever the element uh, that was inserted or that was pushed into the stack last, the, the, we retrieve the element, the retrieval, that, that is that element we get first when we retrieve. So that way it is last in first out data structure also. So this is the basic concept of a stack. Now let's see the stack with respect to 8086 microprocessor. In a 086 microprocessor, uh, a certain area of the memory is treated as a as a stack, and or a certain area or a certain segment of the memory is treated as a stack, and that segment is called as the stack segment. Okay, and uh, there are a few things you people need to know before uh, using that stack segment, uh, uh, or before using the inbuilt a 86 stack in your program. So if uh, let's start with the first thing. The first thing that you need to know is that the stack in A086 is of 16 bits in width. Okay, that is the stack. As I said, notice the stack you can think of uh, as as uh, 
as if it, 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 it is broken down into some slots. So each slot of the stack, uh, 806 microprocessor stack, is of 16 bits. Okay, these are slots, and these slots are of with 16 bits. It means what? The push and the pop operation, the push and pop operation of 8086 is they are of 16 bits operation. 16 bits operation. Okay, now I'll be talking about these points uh, when I'll be writing the actual instructions. But for the time being, you need to know is that the, the, the stack, the width of the stack in 8086 is of 16 bits. Uh, it is of 16 bits. It means push and pop. They are of six. They are 16 bit operations, or 16 bit instructions. Okay. So that is the first point you need to know. And what is the second point that you need to know? The second point, important point, is that the stack pointer, the stack pointer. Okay, that is the SP register. Okay, the stack pointer register. The stack pointer register points to it points to the 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 the, the, the topmost element, the top of the of the stack. Now see here when you, when I say that the, the, the stack pointer the stack pointer SP points to the top of the stack, it means what? Um, uh, how do we make that? Uh, it means what we have to specify where this stack actually starts, isn't it? In some way, I mean, how what value that stack pointer should take at the beginning? That is a question. And that thing we can specify the starting of the stack, or we can specify the top of the stack in assembly program using this, uh, you know, assembler directive stack dot stack, and then you write a number here, maybe ten H or some any other number. As soon as I write this line, you'll be saying, "Okay, this line we have already have, we have already seen many a times." It means in all, in all the assembly program that that those we have written till now. Yes, because I included this line in the skeleton of the program. You see here, dot stack ten eight. So when we write this line, what we actually mean or what we actually intend to do is we want to set this value of the stack pointer to ten eight. Okay, so the stack pointer points to the top of the stack, and we have to, whenever we are writing, whenever we want, are writing an assembly program where we want to make use of the stack programmatically, then we have to actually set the, uh, you know, the, the stack pointer to to some particular value, and that value will be the starting slot of the stack. Now let's come to the third point that you need to know. Third important point, and that important that point is uh, related to this push and pop instruction. Okay, so I'll, let me write them one by one. Now this push instruction, whenever you are pushing some data into the stack, it, it is it, it does two things. The first thing that it it does is it it decreases the value of the stack pointer by two. See, remember here. See here. The stack pointer in 8086, the stack pointer goes down every time you push an element into the stack. That is not, that should not be surprising. Okay, this is just the implementation details actually. Now, the stack pointer actually goes down. Okay, so the topmost element has the highest slot number. Then the, you know, every time you insert an element, the, the, the stack pointer actually goes down. Okay, so that thing you, you should remember. And then the second thing is that is see here whenever I suppose you are inserting say push nine, so first thing that it will do is it will reduce the it will decrease the stack pointer by two, and then in the second step it will return, no sorry it will store whatever it is the memory location now pointed by stack pointer there it will store this number nine. So these two things happen when you push an element into the stack. First thing is it decreases the value of the stack pointer. Okay, and in, in, with respect to pop now, then what happens? First thing that it will do is it will first return or it will first retrieve whatever the way you want to say. It will first retrieve whatever it is there pointed by the stack pointer. See, when you pop, the SP will be used as it is to, uh, you know, to perform the operation. And then once it is done, once the element or the the content of the stack pointer, uh, content of the memory location pointed by stack pointer is retrieved, then it will decrease, it will increase the value of the stack pointer by two, SP plus two. So they should be reversed. See here, whenever we push, we decrease it by two. Whenever we pop, we increase it by two. But the thing is, whenever we push, first we decrease, then we store. But whenever we pop, 
first we retrieve then we you know increase so these these two important things that you you need to know about uh, whenever you are dealing with a stack and about these two why this two is coming why we are decreasing it by two or increasing it by two uh, see here this increasing and decreasing could have been other ways also it means when you push you increase in that case when you pop uh, you could have decreased but here uh, the, the, this 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 approach is taken like whenever we push uh, we decrease and whenever we pop we increase but why is by why is it, why it is by two why not by one why it is by two because of this first point because the width of the stack is of 16 bits it means you are allowed to perform 16 bits operation at a time so it means you see the second point okay let, let us see now say all these three points together let's see an example then things will be clear i guess okay so let's say for example we have this stack we have this stack and these these slots are let me draw as a 16 bits slot like that these are the slots of the stack and then let's say we have written the assembler directive in this way stack and say 10 h so it means see these these are 16 bit slots means there are some bytes these are some bytes and these bytes have some byte number also right so say for example you consider this is the byte number 10 h okay so when i say stack 10 h when we write stack 10 h it means that the stack pointer will be pointing to this particular location so 10 h and 11 h both of them will be uh you know these two bytes conjugatively will will be the content of the memory location pointed by sp that's the first thing right now you see the this 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 slot number i'm writing here it as what is the value of the stack pointer it is now 10 h it means it is pointing to these two bytes okay now what if the stack pointer is here what it would have been the stack pointer would have been it is 11 h means it is 12 and this is then 13 h and what will be the byte number here in that case if it is 10 it will be 9 h no 10 means what it is actually 16 so uh, 16 uh, it means it will be uh, 15 so it means 0 e h and this is mm, so not 0 e 0 f h and this one will be 0 e h right so that way th this this particular slot number will be represented by 0 e you got the point now this slot is 10 this slot is uh 12 this slot is 14 this slot will be 16 this slot will be 18 isn't it similarly if it is e then it will be d and it will be c so that way the slot number here will be c and if, if it is c then it will be b and it is a so slot number this one will be a and if it is a it will be what it will be 9 it will be 8 so slot number this one will be 8 see 8 10 12 then this is uh, uh 14 and this is 16 this is 18 this is uh 18 plus 2 20 in decimal and this is 22 and 24 in decimal these are in hexadecimal i mean the numbers are in hexadecimal the value that i'm saying in hexadecimal uh, but i guess you got the point right now you see when i write stack is equal to 10 dot stack 10 h it means that we are actually setting up this stack pointer to point to uh, you know this this particular slot written by and appointed by 10 h that is your first point now uh, that is the second point right now see here we saw the width is of 16 bits and we set the stack pointer so it will be pointing to this uh, first element or the starting of the stack and then let's do some push and pop and how they will be you know how they will be changing the content of the uh, of the stack pointer okay so you see these are byte numbers okay now i i just wrote these byte numbers here i mean they are not the content so let me draw it one more time here so in this way now these are of 16 16 bits i'll be directly writing the byte numbers now okay then say this is byte number i said you know this this number here stack 10 h it means say this is the uh, you know 10 h so if it is 10 h again this is with 2 2 bytes so uh, the previous one was like it, it starts from the like eca8 it goes down that way 
E C A eight eight ten twelve fourteen then this is sixteen and then it is uh, twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen H okay so that way these are your you know slot numbers you can think like that now when we write dot sp uh, dot stack 10h basically we are point we are making this sp to point to 10h up to this point things are clear right now what is the next thing next thing is say for example we are we are say we are uh, we are pushing element into the stack say we are we want to push elements into the stack say we are writing push is the 20 okay so these 20 when we do that what is the first thing that it will do it will first increase this uh, it will first decrease the stack pointer by 2 sp equal to sp minus 2 that will happen first it means see sp minus 2 means i, I already said you why now it is by 2 because you see the values of sp they, 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 if it is 10h then the, the next value would be could be either 12 if you increase or if you decrease it will be e Okay, so that way, because it, it points to two, two bytes together. So that's why we have to perform it by two. Okay, so that, then when we do push operation in 8086, then what we do first, or what the microprocessor does first, is that it, it reduces the value of stack pointer by two. So in this case, what will happen? 10H will become, it, it will be deduced by two. So if it is 10H, if you subtract, 10h means 16 in decimal so 16 minus 2 is 14 in decimal which is e in hexadecimal so that way the value of the stack pointer will be now to it will become e now the value of the stack pointer will become e okay so let me uh, erase this previous connection and let me write it in this way the value of the the, the, the stack pointer will be now pointing to e okay and then whatever it is the memory location pointed by this new sp value there will be storing the the value so here these these 16 bits will have the binary representation of the number 20 okay or whatever the value it will occupy that particular slot done now suppose again after that if we perform push say another number say uh, say 65 so in that case what will happen again first it will reduce the value of the stack pointer by 2 so it means right now the stack pointer is e so e minus 2 will be c now the stack pointer will be pointing to c the first thing that it will do it will update the stack pointer so that is the first thing that it does okay after updating the stack pointer it will uh, after updating this the, the stack pointer it will store there actual value will be stored there after updating it okay so let me change the color right. uh, after that it will store in that memory location whatever it is that you want to store so as so here this 16 bits will have the binary representation of this number 65 okay so that way you see here the stack pointer always points to the you know the top of the stack now when the stack is empty it will be pointing to a location uh, it will be pointing to the starting of the stack now see by this time you should realize that at the starting slot of the stack usually nothing is getting stored i mean no the starting slot is sort of outside this top outside the you know the stack you know you remember like just think for a moment the starting slot is outside the stack you remember implementing stack in c programming language you use this top equal to minus one to initialize like a blank stack the same thing actually you see here usually the con uh, index starts from zero so when we uh, when it is an empty stack it means the top is pointing somewhere which is actually outside the stack the same way when you write uh, when you write these this directive assembler directive it actually makes the stack pointer to point to the beginning of the stack which is basically outside the stack okay that is it will point to somewhere it will point to that particular slot which you decrease by two will give you the first actual slot inside this stack okay so that that's something you should realize that if you write stack 10h then in 10h actually nothing is going to be stored as part of the stack the elements which will be stored are uh, the location from where it will start storing the data will be you know two bytes down 10h because we first decrease the stack pointer by two then only we store the actual element there but the point see after storing two values 
Uh, see the first number when we try to store 20 first we reduce it by 2 and then in e we store 20 we never stored anything in 10h although 10h was the starting point got the point so whenever it is po pointing to the starting of the stack it means the stack is actually empty sort of that okay that's the first thing now let's say uh, pop we have seen this push operation now let's say pop operation so if you write pop and now see here, whenever you are writing pop, you should realize that, see what it is, what it does. It retrieves the content of the stack pointer, whatever it is pointing to, and then it increases the value of the stack pointer by two. Well, when it retrieves the content of the stack pointers, it means what it is actually returning you something. So if it returns something, you have to also specify a location where you want to store that something or where you want to store that retrieved value okay so for that reason whenever you are writing pop instruction what you also have to specify is you have to specify a location maybe it is a register or memory location you have to specify that thing here okay and there uh, this 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 element this popped element will be stored say for example for simplicity i'm writing here uh, pop dx so that way what it will do see here after pushing these two element i'm executing pop dx what is the importance of these dx here basically you can write any register so any 16-bit registers so here i am writing for this demonstration dx so what this dx is doing basically this in this dx whatever so what it will do first it will first retrieve the content of the of the stack pointer i mean retrieve the content from the memory location pointed by stack pointer so that will be retrieved and it will be stored in the x register so that way for this example what is this stack pointer pointing to the stack pointer is pointing to c so it means what in for this example whatever it is there in memory location c that will be stored in the x it means ultimately in the x we will have the value c means 65 16 bits so those 16 bits will be copied here so 65 will be stored and after that stack pointer will be increased by two so it means in this case after retrieving these you know the content from the memory location c the stack pointer will be increased by two so in this case our stack pointer will now become c plus two this is 12 plus two is 14 14 means e in hexadecimal it means after performing this pop operation you see these these uh this uh this sp is sp will be pointing to this particular location will be pointing to this particular location see here once we have performed this pop operation now the topmost element is 20 which is actually pointed by this tag pointer got the point okay and let's do it again for completeness the next one so again if you write pop say dx so in that case again dx will have whatever it is the value of the stack pointer it means dx will have whatever it is the value of the stack pointer means stack pointer is e so whatever it is at the location e it means it will have it means dx will have at location e we have 20 so dx will have 20 so that is the first thing that it will do and after that the, the second thing that it will do is it will reduce the it will increase the value of the stack pointer by 2 it means here the stack pointer is e e plus 2 is uh, uh, e means your 14 14 plus 2 is 16 16 means your 10 in hexadecimal so that 10 h will be stored in sp it means this see here it is immediately it is as if this stack pointer is moving down by one slot isn't it can you see that this stack pointer as if it is moving down by one oh i i just you know it is as if the stack pointer is moving down by one slot right that's what that is okay then you got the points and these are the basic things uh you need to know when you are actually uh you know uh, you are actually interacting or you are using you are using the stack uh in h x programming okay so the things that you need to know is if they are of uh, like the, the width of the stack is 16 bits the stack pointer will be pointing to the beginning of the stack and when you do push first the stack pointer will be reduced by decreased by two and then the element will be stored there and when you pop first the content of the stack pointer will be retrieved and then uh, the the stack pointer will be increased by two got it okay okay then
let's now uh, write some simple code and see uh, you know how it works okay uh, i'll be showing you i'll be writing some simple push and pop operation and i'll be showing you uh, this program in debug mode that way you'll you'll get to know uh, like you'll be able to see what is the content of the stack register and all this stuff okay and then we'll be writing the program that i talked about at the beginning okay so for that reason stack i'm writing 10 h in data segment okay i don't need much here so say for example i want to store say i'm just writing move ax comma some number say just write some number that is same in hexadecimal and decimal move ax comma nine and then i'm writing push the content of the ax register to the stack then again suppose i again store the number say eight in ax and then i write push the content of ax again to the stack and then again i write move the content of ax register uh to the uh to the what and move uh, the number seven to ax register and then again i push uh, say the content of ax register to uh, the stack basically i'm executing three push operation okay and every time i'm pushing the content of the ax register into the stack but the thing is before pushing ax into the stack i'm actually changing the content of the ax register so that way first i'm pushing nine into the stack then eight then seven and after that let me pop them out and uh, let me store the result in the x register every time i pop i store the result in dx i pop and i store the result in the x so three elements i post three element i popped now it is the responsibility of the program certainly uh, of the programmer uh, to take to keep track of this pushing and popping i mean uh, if i write here uh, four pops okay although i have pushed only three elements now i'm trying to pop four elements the the the, uh, the assembler is not going to help me in this way it will it will it will try to execute the code and whatever it is the memory location see it will simply go on decreasing this as uh, go on increasing the sp pointer it will, it will not know exactly what you know where that stack was starting at okay so that way even if you try to access some content even if you try to access content from the memory location 10 h it will give you some content whatever it is there if you try to access the content from memory location 12 h it will give you but the thing is those are not inside the stack and those things you have to take care of as a programmer by default you're not going to get any support or warning or error messages okay so it means when you write these four pops it is valid program but the thing is logically it is wrong and it is your responsibility to keep you know to to to, to keep this logical consistency got the point yes okay now, now suppose we want to trace the program for that reason we will be opening this uh tasm turbo assembler and then there will be compiling the program tasm pp15.asm pp15 is the program name pp15 and dot asm then let's see no error no warning that's good and then t link pp15.asm i mean that's good means i'm writing on with a straightforward not even a program i'm just writing a few instructions uh t link no no that's wrong p15 okay and then uh i want to execute this program in debug mode so i'll be writing td pp15 okay let's see what comes now let me show you the program side by side yeah so this you know moving the content ds to ax is that the move ax comma zero zero nine the first line line number nine on the right hand side okay let me share line number nine on the right hand side here this is this instruction and after that say the next instruction will be uh this is the right instruction which will be executed which will make this ax nine obviously push ax now before pushing the content see what let's see what is this stack pointer pointing to first thing is you see the stack pointer the value of this stack pointer is 0010 why is it so 0010 because in the code you see this assembler directive we have written stack 10h so as soon as you write this thing here we are actually setting the stack pointer to point to 10h okay so that is the right now the current situation is stack pointer is pointing to 10h okay and then we are ready to execute this push instructions push whatever it is the content content of ax register into the stack now what do we know about push that first thing it will do is it will 
it will decrease this tag pointer by 2. So 10 minus 2, 10 is 16, 16 minus 2 is 14, which is E. So stack pointer will now become E. And in that location, in that location E, the content of AX, which is 9, will be stored. Now see here, this is the stack pointer and this is the content of the stack. See, right hand side, bottom corner, this is the content of the stack. These are byte numbers, okay, or these are the, you know, uh, the value of the, distinct value of the stack pointer. 10, if you, if you uh, increase it, it will become 12, 14, 16, 18, that way. And if you decrease it, it will be the previous one. Just before 10, the previous slot was at E, then previous slot was at C, then A, then A. You see here, it is the, it is the same thing that I showed you in the diagram, isn't it? See, 8, A, C, E, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Only thing is that in, in this uh, uh, turbo assembler, it is displayed in sort of reverse order. That is the only difference, okay? Other than that, it is exactly the same thing. It, it, it is displayed in this way, actually. These numbers are, like, this is your stack pointer. It is 10. If it is 10, then these numbers are like, uh, sorry, E, C. This is E, C. Uh, a A E C A eight and these uh like you know twelve fourteen uh sixteen and eighteen here in this assembler you are seeing this uh this this stack in this fashion but here in my case it, I, I wrote it in this order but ultimately the same thing okay now you see what will happen now right now the instruction which will be executed is this push a x now, push AX means first thing is it will be decreasing the value of the SP pointer, which will become E now. E means here, I mean, you know, this A, uh, sorry, where it is, it is 10. So it will decrease the stack pointer. So stack pointer will be pointing to memory location E. And in that memory location, the content will be copied. Whatever we are pushing, that will be copied to that memory location. So two changes. Now, see. This instruction will be executed, and uh, when I execute this instruction, you should be able to notice two changes here on the right hand side panels. First change will happen here in SP, it, the value of this SP will become E, and the second change that will happen is in this the content of the stack, where in E, 9 will come. Just keep your eyes here and here, then you should see the change. This will become 9, and this will become E. Okay, so I'll be pressing the F7 key at the count of three. Uh, one, two, three. You see, this is becoming E and at the location E, nine is stored. Consistent with what I said? Yes. And then the next instruction will be uh, AX0008. It means in AX, we'll be copying A. Done. And then the next instruction is again push. So again push means what? First we'll go to SP, which is E. So it will be first decreased by 2. If you decrease SP by 2, then it will become C. So it means this SP will become C when I complete that, when I execute this instruction, SP will become C. And in that memory location C here, you see, before E, the memory location is actually C. So SP will become C and in that C, whatever it is the AX, it will be stored. That is A, it will be stored here. So I'll be pressing F7 at the count of three. You should see a change here. It will be changed to C and it will be at C, the value will be A. One, two, three. At C, value is A. Now stack pointer is C. Got it? Now again, the next instruction is storing seven in AX. So seven is stored. Push AX. So SP is now C. So it will be decreased by two. So it will become A. And in the memory location A, or at the memory location A, whatever it is the content of AX, that will be stored. So AX is 7. So in A, 7 will come and SP will become A. SP is A. At A, we have stored 7. Done. Now the next instruction which will be executed is now, you see, pop DX. Now this will change the content of, yes, it will change the content of DX register. First, that is, it will first retrieve whatever it is the, whatever it is there at the location A. At location A7 is there. So that 7 will be first copied to DX register. Okay. And then it will increase the value of SP to, you know, point to the next element. Now increase means A will become now C. A means 10, C means 12. So 10 will become 12. It means now SP will become C. 
see as soon as i complete executing this instruction what are the changes that you will see first you will see a change here in dx the value will be 7 and then sp will become uh, c okay 1 2 3 sp is c dx is 7 now similarly again if i perform uh, the next instruction is again pop means it means what it will first retrieve the content of c so slot c 8 is there so this retrieved content we want to store in dx so this 8 will go to dx register and c will be increased by 2 if you increase c by 2 it will become 14 which is e so here you, you should see that stack pointer this one actually the stack pointer will become e the stack pointer is e and the the you know whatever it was there in c it was copied it is now copied to a, uh, dx okay and the next one is again pop dx so what it will do stack pointer it is now e so in e 9 is there so 9 will be copied to dx register plus this e will be um, e will be increased by 2 so e will become f and then f means 15 then 16 16 means 10 so sp will become 10 and dx will become 9 sp is 10 dx is 9 right and then this is the end of the program so that is how the stack works in HRH6 okay done now if you have understood this much then we are now ready to write this program write a HRH6 ALP to re reverse the content of a string using stack okay let's try to do it first let's see what is the logic or approach uh, that we are going to use and then we'll be writing the code it's a very straightforward program actually let's start with how we declare a string in h086 so str1 say of bytes and say the string that we have stored is hello okay, store it in this way hello all are in lower uppercase and then wall okay and you know like in data segment this string will be stored somewhere uh, uh these these characters will be stored in conjugative bytes like that okay hello world and then dollar now also what we know is that we can actually iterate over the content of the string that is we can read each and every character uh, one at a time of the string uh, by using uh, you know register uh, by using based index addressing mode what i mean is that we can set our uh, one of the we can set the base pointer or the base register that is bx to point to the starting of the string and we can set the initial value of source index uh, to be zero okay so how do you do that how do you how do you store the starting address in this bx register just by you know making use of this lea load effective address of this string one in this bx register so this particular instruction will load the starting address in bx register or it it will it will set this bx to point to the starting array a uh, starting byte of the of the string are storing zero in si is not a big deal you just have to write move si uh, you know si comma zero so once we have these two registers set then we can use this based index addressing mode to access the content of these uh, you know uh, uh, you know the, the the characters present in the string one at a time one at a time in the sense that we'll be starting with si equal to zero and in each iteration we can increase the value of si by one and till we get bx plus si is equal to this dollar symbol right i mean uh, uh, you, you should you should be clear with that point okay now what we do is actually see using this arrangement what we can do is you can read a character we know how to read a character from left to right one at a time that thing is clear now what we'll be doing is once we read the character once we read the character we you will be putting the uh the character at the uh, you know, uh we'll be pushing the character into the stack that is once we read the character by bx plus si that bx plus si content will be pushing it into the stack so when si is equal to zero what character will be pushing it we'll be pushing h into the stack when si is equal to one then we'll be pushing e into the stack okay and when si equal to two we'll be pushing l into the stack like that at some point of time si will be three then four then five six seven eight nine ten 
there is a mistake i guess it should be hello h e l l o w o r l d uh, yeah it is 11 actually that's what i was thinking right sorry uh, you might be thinking how do i know because i i do i took i i did a lots of retake actually on this video every time i do some small silly mistakes and uh and or or something something happens for which i have to you know retake the entire video mostly but anyhow uh and i did that many a times that's why i knew like okay in my previous iteration it was sort of 11 you know somewhere but anyhow that's a, an extra thing so what we know is okay if si is equal to zero h will be pushed into the stack if si equal to one then we'll be reading the character e and that character will be pushing into the stack that way l will be pushed so uh no no h e l then o then space then w then o then r then l and then d these characters will be pushed See here when si is equal to 10 when si is equal to 10 then bx plus si bx plus 10 will be d d will be pushing into the stack okay that is the last character after that si will become 11 see after that si will become 11 and that time the character at bx plus si dx plus 11 will be the dollar symbol so it means that is the end of the string so when we get this end of the string symbol end of the string symbol will be stopped that is we are not going to push that end of the string symbol here into the stack okay so it means when we finish reading the string from left to right what are the things that we should be interested in the first thing is that our value of si source index will be 11 and what uh, information that will give us it will it will tell us that okay there are 11 characters already we have pushed into the stack you see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 characters we have pushed into the stack it means what now we are ready to pop the stack now we are ready to pop the stack 11 times 11 times isn't it so what will happen when we pop this stack for the first time? When we pop this stack, see here, after pushing uh, this D into the stack, the stack pointer will be pointing to this, isn't it? So if we, if we, uh, and these numbers will be written in this way, say for example, this is your, uh, see after after reading will be increasing. So it, this number should be small. Say let's, let's, let's consider for simplicity, this number is two, this number will be four, then 6, then 8, then 10, then 12, uh, then C and D, and then E and F, this is E, and then this will become 10, this will become 12, then 14, then 16, like that, okay? So stack pointer, after pushing stack, uh, this D, the stack pointer value will be 2, okay? So when we retrieve, say for example, just after, you know, like pushing this d we now perform the first pop operation so we are actually just by looking at si we know that we can actually perform this pop 11 times say let's say what happens when we perform this pop uh you know for the first time let's say we write pop and we write this dx okay let me write it here say i write pop here and dx it means what we want to get the content of 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 the of the two consecutive bytes pointed by this sp in this dx register Okay, it means what actually we want to do by writing this instruction, we want to set the content of the X to be the content of the memory location SP. That's what we want, right? So that way in the X, what will be stored? In the X, the content of that uh, location is D, D will be stored. And after doing that, stack pointer will be increased to point to the next character, the, the topmost character there. Right, so that way you you see here for the first time when we increase when we execute pop dx will have the value d and sp value will be after completion of that instruction sp value will be uh, will be four, right? Next time if we perform this pop instruction again just for uh, clarity I'm writing it one more time pop dx suppose next time we are increase, executing it then that time what will happen dx will have the value of sp it means dx will have the value of memory location 4 which is l so it means in dx we'll have l and we'll also be increasing sp to point to the next element the next top element so sp will be pointing to this so that way if you see at some point of time sp will be pointing to this this 16 also right sp will have the value 16 
isn't it? So that time, if you perform this pop element, and when this value will be 16, see, first, this is a, when you execute for the first time, the value will become 4. Second time, it will be 6. Third time, 8. Fourth time, A. Fifth, C. Sixth, E. Seventh, 10. Eighth, 12. Ninth, 14. Tenth, 16. Now see, when the SP is 16, still we have some information there, right? So 11th time, if you read, the so last time will be the 11th time. So 11th time, if I perform, this is my 11th pop instruction, actually. So what will happen is DX will have the value of SP. Um, what is SP? When we execute 11th time pop, SP will have 16. So whatever it is the memory location, whatever it is there in memory location 16 that we want to store in DX. So that way in DX, H will be there. Okay, that is 11th pop instruction will retrieve the last character. And after that, SP will be pointing to say 18, which is certainly the you know, beginning of the of the stack. To happen this arrangement, uh, we should have written uh, dot stack as um you know 18 h so in that case it will be the case okay so that way if we now see after pushing all the content of the string into the stack if we simply perform this pop operation as many times as the length of the string we are going to get the content of the string in reverse order see first we're going to get d then we're going to get l and that way at the end we're going to get h right so things are clear up to this point now you see how we can execute this is a small thing let me tell you how we can execute pop 11 numbers of time yeah certainly you know you can use these counters and jump but you can use directly this loop instruction isn't it so it is very simple actually executing 11 times this pop instruction so we want to pop the content say to dx register 11 times so for that reason we have to use the loop instruction say let's call this 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 thing as give it level l1 and then pop dx and simply loop l1 but to have you know to you know we, along with this loop we know that we have this default counter where we have to store how many times we want to repeat this loop and how many times we want to repeat this loop how many times we have to you know pop 11 times that is the content of the source index whatever it is the length of the string after reading the content or after pushing the entire string into the stack automatically the stack index will have the length of the string and once we did that using we can store the length as the default value of as the as the value of this default counter for loop and then we can use loop instruction to perform this pop operation that many numbers of times so that way we're going to get the content of the string in reverse order okay so up to this point in, if things are clear let me write it in the form of a program and then we'll be modifying the program to get the exact behavior okay okay if you have any doubts or queries if people uh, feel free to ask me questions in the comment section that way i'll also be get benefited in some way i mean if i get comments i think youtube will give me some preference i guess i'm not sure how exactly this youtube algorithm works but then also okay then uh, if it is the case then we, if we have learned then let let us write the code then to reverse the content of a string using stack okay for that reason we will be storing the string uh, into this uh, let's declare a string and then store it here and call the string as hello world with the dollar symbol at the end okay done and after that let's get rid of all this move and form after that what we want is we want to load the effective address of the string to bx register okay and then we want to store zero to uh, si and then we want to read the string till the end so let me use a level anyhow we're going to come back here so we are, i'm using it l1 so compare the content of the register bx plus si with the dollar symbol okay and if they are equal then we are done with the uh, you know we are done pushing this uh, the string into the stack so we can like uh, uh, we can display the content of the we can pop now okay so once we if they are equal we are ready to pop so let me call it a reverse read okay and I'll be writing the content of this block in a moment, but for the time being, let me keep it blank. Done. But if they're not equal, let's finish the uh, pushing part. 
So first thing is what we have to do is, yeah, see, the content of bx plus si when we read actually from the from the string when we read the content of this bx plus si bx plus si we want to read it as a byte not as a word if we read it as a word then two characters will be copied so when we read it we want to read it as a byte and how we can make it sure just by copying the content just by copying the content of these bx plus si to a 8-bit register say al okay now see when we do this when we copy okay we can do that actually we cannot write here ax because why cannot we write here ax because it will in that case it will copy two consecutive bytes there that that is something that we do not want okay so for that reason we have to copy it to a you know 8-bit register okay that solves our problem up to some extent but thing is after copying it to a 8-bit register can we write like push al that's the thing, right? We cannot copy, although we can, now we have copied the character to a 8-bit register. That is fine. Now, that 8-bit content directly we cannot push into the stack because we already have learned that push is a 16-bit instructions. So, certainly, the operand should be of 16 bits, not 8 bits. So, if you try to execute this program, it will throw you an error. This is not right, okay? So, for that reason, what we have to do is we have to make sure this, we have to actually sort of expand this 8 bit to, uh, you know, to a 16 bit number. Okay? And how do we do that? We can do it like uh, this AL, that will be fine. That is, we might, we want to write here AX actually, but this writing this AX will be okay only if the content of the AH register is 00. zero. So in that case, it will be like this. See, if the content of the AX register is 0, 0, if the content of, if the content, if the content of this AX, AH register is 0, 0, see AH and AL register. So here, we, we copied the particular character here, whatever it is, the character A, B, C, D, X, Y that that we have copied here so for example the character is p we have copied it here now this ah part we don't know right at this point we have like we we, we never have explicit explicitly stored anything in ah so simply pushing ax is not going to work sometimes it might not work because if the content of ah is something other than say zero say for example zero two in that case we'll be pushing a wrong value into the stack so before pushing it before pushing this entire AX into the stack, what we want to make sure is this AH is 0, 0. So for that thing, what you can do is before actually copying the content to AL, you can make this AX register clear by writing XOR AX X. You know, like if you perform XOR uh, the same number with this same, you know, this uh, the XOR, same thing with, um, you know, if you perform XOR on two similar things, it will be 0 because same means 0 you know that right yes push ax then uh it will it will push the content into the uh, uh now it is it is okay fine we now ah is certainly zero and al is the the particular character so we can safely push ax into the stack because you see here uh, this just consider a 16-bit number where first two bytes uh, first uh, first two nibbles or first byte is zero and second byte is say for example 65 it is same as this this number is same as this number but this 65 is in eight bits and this 65 is in you know 16 bits why why we need this 16-bit version of this number because we want to push this content into the stack so that's why we need this to be of 16 bits. And that's how we can achieve it, just by first clearing AX so that AH is zero, then copying the actual content to AL, and then pushing the, you know, the content of AX to the register. Then after that, what is left is, okay, we have to increase the value of the source index to point to the next, uh, so that it points to the next character in the next iteration. And after that, what we need to do is, yeah, simply go back to L1, that's all. So this loop will first read the character. It will check if it is the last character. If it is so, we'll be re reading the content or we'll be, we are ready to pop the content of the stack. 
but if it is not the last character then we will be first clearing the content of ax copying the content actual character to al then pushing ax to the stack increasing si jump l1 right this loop is fine now at the end like once we finish reading the content of the stack then we are ready to pop the content and as i said in my explanation that how many times you have to pop as the length of the string and where it is stored in si so we can directly make use of the loop uh, loop uh, instructions so for that reason we have to set first the default counter and what will be the value of the counter whatever it is the content of si and we have to give it a uh, name level say l2 and here what we want to do is we have to pop the content say to dx register and after that simply loop uh, to l2 Okay, so each iteration uh, using this loop instruction will decrease the value of cx till it till it you know, becomes zero. As soon as it becomes zero, it will stop. So that way, this this body L2 part will be executed, whatever it is the value of this uh, cx register. Indirectly, whatever it is the value of the si register. Indirectly, whatever it is the length of the string. Now see, popping the content uh, is only, only popping the content is certainly not going to display anything on the screen. Suppose we want to retrieve the character and also we want to display the character on the screen. So for that reason, see, when we pop the content to DX register, we know because we pop, we pushed, whatever we pushed into the stack, the first eight bits of all those contents are zero and only the lower lower order or the least significant eight bits are useful information so that way the h is anyhow zero only dl will contain the actual content and we know like if something is there in dl that content we can display on the screen by moving first by making use of these these two instructions move uh, to a h register the value zero to h and then you have to call in 21h or you have to execute in 21h done so in every iteration of the loop we'll be retrieving the content to dx we'll be popping the content to dx then indirectly we are actually storing the content in dl then displaying the content on the screen and again we repeat this process as long as uh, the cx is not equal to zero now see if i execute this program then based on my explanation you should be able to uh, we should be we should be getting this output like if if our input string is hello world output will be d l r o w space o l l e h okay so if everything is right that's that's that should be our output let's execute this program and check the output so for that reason i'll be compiling it tasm pp 15.asm uh there's this warning message argument needs type override at line number 13. what is there in line number 13 comparing the content with this dollar symbol okay now this compare th th this is a memory location now it is getting confused like how many bytes should be compared with this dollar for that you can do one thing we can actually first move the content to al anyhow we are using al down but uh, no not con we do not want that we can use al here safely right if you see you should be able to know that or you can use any other register so al comma First, you copy the, the character, this dollar symbol, to a 8-bit register and then compare the content of that 8-bit register with the, uh, you know, this, uh, this memory location. So that way, the confusion will not be there, whether it should compare 8 bits or 16 bits. Since it is 8-bit register, immediately it will know, okay, it is doing an 8-bit operation. Uh, so that was the source of the, the warning message that should, we should be able to get rid of that. Yeah, done. And then T link, then PP15, and done. PP15. So as soon as I press enter, see, we are getting the output in reverse order, right? Here you see, hello world, H E L L O space W O R L D, hello world. So whatever the string that we write here, whatever it is, say for example, a cat and a dog fights and mingles so if i now compile and execute the program then you should be able to see this output okay it is in reverse order so you might not be able to read it fluently but a cat and a dog fights and mingles okay anyhow that's that's the thing here 
Now, okay, instead of that, let me write here a sequence of digits, say, for example, 4, 3, 2, 1. So in that case, the output will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Output will be 1, 2, 3, 4, doesn't it? Okay, this program is working and it is it is it is it is showing us the content of the string in reverse order. But it is actually not reversing the content. You see, the content of string one is still uh, uh, four three two one. It is not one two three four. How you can verify it? Just here. Say, load the effective address of the string in the X register and then display it by moving zero nine to a h and int 21 so if i reverse the uh, like if i see now the if i execute this program the i want i want to i want to give you a new line okay so for that reason let me do it um move a h comma sorry i have to store it in dl so dl this 10 then you know the line feed character so i want to first display it so that it comes to the next line and then i'll be displaying the string so move uh, to a h register 0 to one character only i want to display and int 21 h this is to display the new line character and this part to display the content of the string on the screen let's execute this program and see the output Okay, there is an error message. Illegal use of register at line number 34. What mistake did I do? Uh, what, what, what am I writing? I'm sorry. Move age, comma, zero, nine, eight, okay? Okay. The link, okay. Okay, now see, one, two, three, four is the output. Our original string was, say, hello. original string was hello it displayed the content of the string it displayed the content of the string in reverse order but the string is still hello but our goal was to you know reverse the string itself okay str itself should now contain o e l oh sorry o l l e h or whatever it is the reverse so in that case what we can do is see in reverse read everything is same it is up to this pop you get the content now what you want to do with the content that is the question so what do we want to do see si since we copied the content of si to cx si is no longer in use so what we'll be doing is actually once we pop here see here uh say this is our after say after pushing the content of the stack I mean, after pushing the, you know, the, the content of the string to the stack, say hello is the string, so it will be like this, H-E-L-L-O. Now, we retrieve the content to by writing, say, pop uh, DX. So, DX will have this value, O, in the lower byte, and upper byte will be zero. So, that way, uh, at some point of time, it will be L, L, E, and H. But the thing is, from here, what we did is, we simply you know displayed this thing on the screen so first o l l e h so as a result on the screen we see the reverse version of the string but what we we have not changed the content of of this str1 str1 which is there in the memory it is still in 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 this way h e l l o and this dollar okay that is here bx will be pointing and then once we finish reading si will be pointing to somewhere here okay so that was the scenario when we pop and display it is not changing the content of the string but we want to change the content of the string also so this dl part this is your dl part right this dl part we want to copy here all the content of the string is there in the stack so we can directly overwrite this uh, you know, we, we pop it and we, we place it here. Say, for example, if we pop O and we can you know, keep this O here, then next time we'll be popping L, so we can keep L here. Next time we'll be keeping L, so L here. Next time E, E will be here. Next time H, we can put H here. And we do not have to explicitly store this dollar because anyhow, that particular character will remain dollar only. 
we are only reversing the content the land is not going to change so this will always be dollar and also we do not have to swap or nothing to do no 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 complicated task we have to do because already the content is stored in the in the in the stack so that way the string content is no longer needed so immediately we pop the content for the first time we can replace that you know uh, you know we can replace the you know the content of the string from the beginning uh, in each pop first pop will replace the first character second pop will replace the second character third pop will replace the third character like that you got the point okay then let's let's try to do it here popping is done okay but we do not want to display it on the screen okay so let this to be the new line character and string i'll be using it but here in l2 will be not this okay even if it is confusing just uh, get rid of get rid of okay, and uh, i did a mistake of what why am i feeling like that yeah this this part here actually popping it and then this this is actually the displaying the character on the screen okay but we do not want to display the content on the screen what we want to do is we want to put it to the stack now see where we want to put it in the stack the the first pop should replace the first character so right now si is pointing to this so first thing is before actually you know when we start doing this popping we have to reset this si to 0 0.20 okay so that will be doing because we already have copied this the length of the string to cx so si is sort of no longer in use so we'll be resetting it before getting into the loop we'll be resetting si to zero so move si to zero and then pop the content it is in dl and then that dl should replace this string bx is still pointing to the string okay we have not changed bl in any way so we can write directly move to bx plus si the content of dl register whatever it is dl then so that way if we repeat this loop then our string itself will be changed see here in the while we're doing pop we are not displaying anything on the screen when we're going to display it we're going to display it once we finished uh, the loop once we finish doing this popping, then we will be displaying only the string one. I mean, this this the same variable string one we are displaying. Now see here, that string will now now displaying this much the, the string. It, since we have changed the content of the string itself, now displaying the string will show us the string in reverse order. You got the point? Let's compile and execute this program and check if our output is right. okay hello what we have inserted hello oh it is no it is, it is what 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 mistake pop oh sorry this thing pop the x move this obviously we have to increase this si and uh, every time we are storing it we have to make si to point to the next character now that way it should be solved but then also, why am I feeling like something is wrong? Yes. O L L E H H E L L O. Okay, that is right. In the previous case, what was it? H E L L O. Okay. Here H E L L O in reverse order. Okay, the string itself is reversed here, right? So let's try with some other examples. Say for example, uh, a cat and a dog something i have written the reverse let's see what after execution of this program what is the content of the string see here this is where only we are displaying nowhere else okay so we are at the end we are displaying the same string but since we reverse the content of the string using this program this this string will be now uh, you know displayed in reverse order should be displayed in reverse order Okay, a cat and a dog. You see here, it is. They are now displayed in reverse order. A cat and a dog. Okay, so now uh, that much only. I guess I wanted to tell you in this part of the video. Um, so one of the things that we learned, we learned about the basics of uh, the the stack in a zero eight six and some details like uh, uh, the like. Uh, uh, know what is the weed of the stack or uh, uh, like 
the stack pointer points to the beginning of the stack. The stack pointer gets decremented every time we push an element into the stack. The stack pointer gets incremented by two every time we pop an element from the stack. And then at the end, we learn like how we can make use of the stack to solve some or to do some computation or you know to write some programs. And specifically here, we wrote a program uh, to reverse the content of a string using the stack. Okay, guys, then that much only uh, in this part of the video. What I request you people to do is, uh, you know, type the program as I was typing and uh, try to execute the program by yourself. Either you can listen to the video, you can understand, and then you can try to write it by yourself. Or what you can do is you just, you know, here I'm showing you the program, the entire program. So you just can pause the video and then you can type the content and then you can execute the program. But at any point, you have to understand actually. Okay, so you just spend some time, think properly, things should make sense. Okay, and if you people have any doubts or queries or somewhere you are finding it difficult to follow, if people can let me know it in the comment section, I'll certainly help you. Okay, guys, then that much only in this video. See you guys in the next video with some new content. Till then, have a nice day.